the electricity and the chemistry. And so a voltaic cell is a way of representing both how the chemistry takes place and where the charges go, because everyone knows from physics that electricity is simply what? What does electricity involve? More, More generally, flow of charge. Okay? So, um, when we talk about voltaic cells, these voltaic cells, let me get the right colors here. the voltaic cells are always going to involve spontaneous reactions. And another name that we'll sometimes use for voltaic cells is going to be galvanic cells. So I'll use voltaic and galvanic interchangeably uh, throughout this chapter. But the main thing you need to know is that Voltaic or galvanic cells involve spontaneous reactions. Another thing that is involved is that there's going to be a transfer of electrons through an external pathway. And a good external pathway is going to be essentially a wire. So you're going to have some electron exchange going in uh, in the solutions, but then the circuit is completed by having electron transfer continue through an external wire. Um, so let's look at different types of electron transfer. We can have an example that would be a direct electron transfer. And you actually did this as an example in lab in Chem 1. You remember the reactions lab you did where you're learning about redox and acid base and precipitation reactions? That was like the second most fun lab you did in Chem 1. Remember that? Yes? No? <laughs> remember maybe putting a piece of um, zinc in a copper sulfate, a blue copper sulfate solution? Remember? Do you remember what happened to that? What did you observe after a little bit of time? What happened to that blue color? Well, there was a black deposit on the zinc wire, but if you left that in there long enough, the blue color of the copper sulfate solution would have turned colorless. Okay? So what was going on there is we had zinc metal reacting with the copper 2 plus ions that were in solution and then you were forming copper metal and then the zinc metal was turning into aqueous zinc ions and that process did you have to do anything or once you put the zinc in the copper sulfate did that reaction just start taking place so if it just started taking place, was that a spontaneous or a non-spontaneous reaction? It would have been spontaneous. So what do you think the sign of the delta G for that reaction would have been? Negative. It would have been negative. And in fact, for that reaction, it's a negative 213 kilojoules. Now, that's an example of a direct electron transfer because the zinc metal was directly in contact with the copper ions in solution and so the electrons were going directly from the zinc metal to the copper ions. So that's a direct electron transfer. I like doing that. Okay, the other kind of electron transfer that we can have is an indirect electron transfer. And in indirect electron transfer, the reacting species are going to be separated. And they're going to be connected by a wire. 
So you have to have a good metallic conducting wire to connect them. Now, another thing that you have to have is you have to have some means of ion transport. Because we said electro electricity is flow of charge, and so there has to be a way for the charges to remain balanced in the different sides of the reaction vessel. And so this ion transport can be either a glass disc that is porous, or it can be what we call a salt bridge. And in lab, in a couple of weeks, I think at the end of the semester, you're going to do an electrochemistry lab in your Chem 2 lab. And I think you're essentially going to use a type of salt bridge. Um, but the pictures I'm going to draw are, are going to be involving more of this porous glass disc. And that porous glass disc, what it allows, it allows ions to move back and forth, but it does not allow the solvent to move back and forth. So it's only the movement of the ions through the glass disc. Some examples of some uh, voltaic or galvanic cells. So I guess I'll do these in blue. So we would have some kind of container and then our porous glass disc is going to be in the middle. That's the, what allows for the ions to move back and forth. In this case, we're going to have a piece of zinc on one side and a piece of copper on the other. And then we're going to connect these with a wire. Okay. Now, we also have a solution. So there's going to be some kind of aqueous solution that the zinc and the copper are in. On the zinc side, we're going to have zinc ions, zinc 2 plus ions also present. On the copper side of the uh, voltaic cell, we're going to have copper 2 plus ions present. And the way the electrons are going to be flowing is they're going to be flowing that way. From the zinc metal through the wire, they're going to end up on the copper metal. So what we have is we have electrons going from zinc to copper in the wire. So that means we're going to have a lot of electrons building up over here on this piece of metal. So if you have all those electrons over there, what are those electrons going to be wanting to do? They don't want to just hang out on the copper metal. What would be a good thing for those electrons to do? They could bind with a copper 2 plus. So we're going to get copper 2 plus ions reacting with the electrons to form copper metal. So over time, what you're going to see is you're going to see kind of a, a deposit forming on that copper piece of metal. That deposit, it'll look kind of black. Uh, until you deposit enough of it, but that's essentially copper metal that's forming from the process of the copper ions reacting with the electrons. And so what kind of process is that if we have the copper ions adding electrons? Reduction. That would be reduction. Okay, on the other side we have the zinc, and apparently the electrons are being pulled out of the zinc metal. So that means this zinc metal, it's losing electrons, 
And so what's happening on this side is we have zinc metal. It's losing electrons to become zinc ions plus two electrons. The electrons are going into the wire to the copper side. And so what should we see happening with the zinc electrode that's in that solution if we're taking the zinc metal and it's turning into zinc ions? It should be shrinking in size, so it gets all pitted and gross and it's not nice and smooth and shiny anymore. Because you're using up the zinc and you're getting more zinc ions in solution. So what process would we have going on on the zinc side of the voltaic cell? That would be oxidation. Now, when we have that kind of voltaic cell taking place, we have the zinc metal and the copper metal. We have a word for what those uh, pieces of metal sticking in the solution are going to be, and we call those electrodes. Okay, those are going to be conductive surfaces that transfer electrons between the aqueous phase and the external circuit or the wire. And we have a name for the different types of electrodes that we can have. So when we have a voltaic cell, the anode is going to be where oxidation takes place. And then the cathode is going to be where reduction takes place. So we have two new terms anode and cathode, and those are opposite types of terms. So you want to be able to have a mnemonic device to help you remember which one is the anode, which one is the cathode. Where does oxidation take place? Where does reduction take place? And one way you might do it is just remember that anode and oxidation are both vowels, and so they go together. So oxidation takes place at the anode, and then the C in cathode and the R in reduction are both consonants, and so the cathode and reduction go together. So anode, oxidation, cathode, reduction. So in the voltaic cell we drew up above, the zinc metal would be what? Would that be the cathode or the anode? The anode. That would be the anode. And the copper metal would be then the cathode. One more little bit about these kinds of electrodes. The particular kinds of electrodes we used are going to be called active electrodes. And they're called active electrodes because they are used in the redox reaction. Okay, if you were to write the overall net ionic equation that's taking place in this electrochemical cell, it would involve the zinc metal and the copper metal. So those are examples of active electrodes. Another kind of electrochemical cell. So in this case, we'll still have our porous glass separator allowing ion transport. But now we'll have a platinum 
electrode there, and a platinum electrode there. Platinum is a very good metal to use in electrochemical work because platinum is one of what's called the noble metals. And they're called noble metals because they do not react very easily. So we often use platinum electrodes. Of course, it does get expensive because platinum is expensive. Okay, we have our external wire. But now what we're going to do is in this compartment, we're going to have both iron 3 plus ions and iron 2 plus ions. In this compartment, we're going to do things a little bit differently. We're going to have some hydrogen gas, and we're going to bubble that hydrogen gas into this electrochemical cell. And we're going to have also in this half of the cell some hydronium ions, or H+, plus if you don't like H3O+. Plus. So in this situation, what we have is we have the iron 3 plus becoming iron 2 plus by gaining an electron. And then we have the hydrogen bubbles becoming hydrogen ions by losing electrons. So in this half of the cell, we have H2 going to 2H plus plus 2 electrons. On the other side, we have Fe3 plus gaining an electron to become Fe2 plus. So now, the first question, we have electrons going through the wire. Which way are the electrons going? They're going toward which? Okay, the electrons are going toward the Fe, and they're coming away from the hydrogen. And that makes sense because we're getting hydro electrons from the platinum electrode with the hydrogen, and then those electrons are going to the platinum electrode in the iron solution, and the iron 3 plus is gaining those electrodes. Okay? So what else can we say about which one is the anode and which one is the cathode? Okay, the iron 3 plus is the cathode. Why is that? Because there's reduction going on, because it's gaining electrons, oil rig, oxidation is loss, reduction is gain. So the platinum electrode that is in the iron solution is acting like the cathode. So that means the platinum electrode in the uh, hydronium solution is acting like the anode because that's where oxidation is taking place. Okay. Now, what's different about this electrochemical cell compared to the electrochemical cell that we saw in the last example? Specifically, what's different about the electrodes? First of all, we're using the same metal in both compartments, but what else is different? We have a different solution on each side. A different solution on each side, okay. Active electrodes? Are they active electrodes? If we were to write these two half reactions and put them together, would you see platinum anywhere in the net ionic equation? No. So these are not active electrodes. This is an example of what we call passive electrodes.
And in the passive electrodes, these are not involved in the reaction. All the passive electrons do is they stick in the solution and they allow a place for the electrons to go or come out of the solution. That's all they do. Okay. Now, in the previous example, we had two active electrodes. In this example, we have two passive electrodes. But you could build an electrochemical cell that has one active and one passive. So we could have a platinum electrode combined with the iron 3 plus iron 2 plus ion on one side, and we can put that coupled with a copper electrode in a copper ion solu solution. And then we can see what happens there. Okay? So either way, you can have two active, two passive, or one of each. Now, what other questions do you have about these electrochemical cells before we move on to the next part? What exactly does the porous glass, like, I know you said it helps or allows ions to transfer, mm -hmm. but are ions transferring between these two here? They are, and I've just shown that we have, for example, like uh, hydronium or iron ions in this case. But you, you're not going to have a solution with just iron ions. You need like a nitrate ion to counterbalance that. And so as the electrons are moving, you need a way to balance the charge between the two solutions. And so what's going to happen is the counter ions, for example, the nitrate, is going to be moving in the opposite direction to keep a balanced charge between the two uh, half cells. How do you make so, sure that only the nitrate is um, because, for example, the metals, the irons, are going to be more attracted to where those electrons are. And if you have the electrons coming out of the uh, hydronium side, there's going to be an overall positive charge there, so that's going to attract the negative ions over toward that side of the electrochemical cell. So other questions about these voltaic or galvanic cells?